Christopher Columbus did not discover America. Evidence has surfaced and continually grown to indicate that many of these pre-Columbian explorers might have come from Africa. What if I told you that Columbus did not discover America? Would you believe me? This widely accepted narrative has been a cornerstone of Western education for centuries, but the truth is far more complex and fascinating. The reality is that Africans were the first people to discover the Americas, which challenges our traditional understanding of history and forces us to reevaluate how history has been presented to us. Imagine a world where the stories of African explorers and traders who bravely crossed the Atlantic centuries before Columbus are celebrated alongside those of European discoverers. This is not a fictional scenario, but a historical reality that has been overlooked for far too long. The evidence from historical accounts, journal entries, and archaeological findings paints a vivid picture of an African presence in the Americas that predates Columbus's famous voyage. In this video, we will delve into the compelling evidence that supports the pre-Columbian African presence in the Americas. From Columbus's journals to the archaeological discoveries of African artifacts, we will explore how history has been misrepresented and why it is crucial to correct this narrative. Let us embark on a journey to uncover the truth about who discovered America and how this revelation can reshape our understanding of the past. The historical accounts and journal entries of European explorers, particularly those of Christopher Columbus, provide significant evidence suggesting that Africans visited the Americas before Columbus's famous voyage. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence comes from Columbus's own journals. In his book Africa and the Discovery of America, American historian and linguist Leo Weiner of Harvard University provides compelling insights into the interactions between Native Americans and individuals of African descent prior to European exploration. Columbus, in his records, mentioned that Native Americans reported seeing black-skinned people arriving from the southeast in boats. These individuals were engaged in trade, specifically exchanging gold-tipped spears, which highlights the complexity of pre-Columbian interactions. He pointed out that Columbus himself was aware that African mariners had preceded him. In his diary of his second voyage, uh, Columbus tells of how the natives of Hispaniola actually had given him gold-tipped metal spearheads that they said were brought by black-skinned people who had come in large boats from the south and southeast. This account is particularly significant because it indicates that there was a level of awareness among Native American communities regarding the existence of African-descended individuals long before European explorers arrived on the scene. The notion of trade between these groups suggests not only contact, but also a potential exchange of culture, technology, and resources. Moreover, the gold-tipped spears themselves are of interest due to their unique composition. Analysis reveals that the ratio of gold, copper, and silver used in the crafting of these spears was identical to the ratios found in similar items forged in Guinea, a region known for its advanced metallurgy. This similarity in composition further substantiates the theory that there was a tangible connection between the African individuals mentioned and the West African region, emphasizing the interconnectedness of these diverse cultures before European contact. Upon returning to Spain, Columbus actually took the spearheads and he, uh, he sent them away and they had them uh, assayed and it turned out to be that these spearheads were covered in this metal, that uh, this alloy that the inhabitants called guanin and uh, the metallurgists uh, actually found out that this was an alloy of 32 parts. It was like 18 of gold, 6 of silver, 8 of copper, which matched the metal used in spearheads made in Western Africa for thousands of years as carried by medieval African warriors, including the Mali and the Moors. The West Africans even called this metal guanine, the same name used by the natives of Hispaniola. Columbus was not the only European explorer to observe the presence of people of African descent in the Americas. Other notable explorers, such as Vasco Nunez de Balboa, also recorded encounters with individuals they described as Negroes upon their arrival in the New World. In 1513, Spanish explorer Vasco Nunez de Balboa, who you might know because people named a very popular dance after him, when Balboa was there, he said he met members of a tribe of Ethiopians in Panama. And according to Balboa's log, these men came from a totally black village that was two days' journey away. And he figured that these blacks had come from Ethiopia 
uh, at a much earlier date. These observations correspond with the oral traditions of various Native American groups in Mexico who have long spoken of the earliest inhabitants of the region as being black. Nicholas Leon, a prominent Mexican anthropologist and historian, meticulously documented the oral traditions of indigenous communities in Mexico. His research highlighted the belief that among the original inhabitants of the land were not only black people but also mythical giants. Leon's reports indicated that this shared belief existed across different indigenous cultures, each of which had its own terms to refer to these early inhabitants in their languages. The notion that Africans might have crossed the Atlantic is quite plausible, especially when we consider their extensive maritime heritage. Throughout history, ancient African kingdoms, particularly those in West Africa, developed a robust tradition of sailing and maritime trade. The Greek historian Herodotus, who wrote in the 5th century BCE, documented accounts of Africans possessing sophisticated seafaring and navigational abilities highlighting their skill in adapting to and mastering the challenges of the ocean. Africans had ships. In fact, they had four kinds of, they had, oh, unbelievable. And Nubian pottery, this is an example of a Nubian pottery with a painting on it that shows a long-hold pottery art that, uh, that shows either a long-hold boat or a papyrus raft or a, a, a hauled out canoe. Now, the Africans, of Guinea had dug out canoes hewn from these monumental trees on the coast there. In 1500, the Portuguese captain uh, Pacheco Pereira wrote, in this country can be found the largest canoes made of a single trunk. Some are so large that they hold 80 men. This advanced knowledge would have equipped them to undertake transatlantic voyages, paving the way for potential contact with the Americas. The Sahara Desert, which was once a lush and fertile area abundant with lakes, served as a crucial trade route linking various African civilizations. During this period, African ships were adept at navigating these expansive waterways, regularly engaging in commerce with neighboring cultures. It is entirely plausible that the maritime techniques and skills developed in these regional waters were eventually applied to more extensive and challenging journeys across the Atlantic Ocean. A particularly noteworthy example of African maritime prowess is the launching of Mali's impressive naval fleet in 1310, as noted by the historian Dr. Ivan Van Sertima. This fleet, which comprised 200 master boats alongside an equal number of supply boats, stands as a remarkable testament to the infrastructural and navigational capabilities of African mariners at the time. Such an extensive fleet demonstrates not only the technical skills required to construct and operate these vessels, but also the organizational capacity to support long-distance voyages, further reinforcing the possibility that Africans engaged in transatlantic exploration. Historical accounts have found significant backing through various cultural and archaeological evidence. One of the most remarkable artifacts from this period is the famous Olmec heads, large stone sculptures discovered in Mexico that date back to around 900 BCE. These colossal heads exhibit distinct facial features that bear a striking resemblance to those of individuals of African descent, prompting scholars to consider the possibility of contact between African peoples and ancient American civilizations. There are 18 rock statues that of heads up to 11 feet tall that are facing the ocean looking east. Now, archaeologists call them the Olmec colossal heads after the people that carved them and uh, they were produced for 50 to 200 years and date from at least 900 BCE when they were mysteriously buried for some reason. Now think about it, it took enormous effort to quarry these, uh, the smallest one was six tons, so six to 50 ton blocks to quarry them and carry them 75 miles away from the quarry and then carve them and then erect them. Uh, these people that they, that they modeled them after must have been important. Whoever they were, they must have been uh, important to be re remembered or obeyed or worshiped. Well, Jose Meglera Serrano, the archeologist who first uncovered them, uh, he said, he pointed out that facial features look amazingly like African blacks, and they all display distinctive headgear or protective helmets. In addition to the Olmec heads, other intriguing discoveries further support this theory. For instance, several ancient writings resembling Egyptian hieroglyphs have been unearthed along the east coast of the United States. 
Furthermore, the presence of Egyptian-sounding place names in the Grand Canyon region raises questions about the extent of ancient transoceanic interactions. Archaeological excavations at notable Olmec sites such as Tlatilco, Cerro de las Mesas, and Monte Alban have revealed skulls and skeletons that have been identified as belonging to individuals of African descent. These findings are particularly significant as they predate Christopher Columbus's arrival in 1492, suggesting that people of African heritage may have been present in the Americas long before European contact. The wealth of evidence gathered from historical accounts, personal journal entries, and archaeological discoveries profoundly reshapes our understanding of American history. It effectively challenges the long-standing Eurocentric narrative, revealing the intricate and sophisticated societies that thrived across the Americas long before European colonization commenced. This critical re-evaluation draws attention to the agency and notable achievements of African explorers and traders who played vital roles in the formation and evolution of various American civilizations. Their contributions were not merely peripheral, they were essential in weaving the rich tapestry of cultural and economic exchanges that characterize this era. Furthermore, this perspective underscores the urgent need for a more inclusive and accurate historical narrative, one that truly acknowledges the myriad origins and diverse influences that have collectively shaped the Americas. For the fields of black consciousness and scholarship, these revelations hold profound significance they spotlight the historical presence and invaluable contributions of Africans in the Americas, enriching our understanding of black history and its intricate global connections. Recognizing this pre-Columbian African presence is a crucial step toward a more comprehensive and nuanced appreciation of the Americas vibrant and multifaceted history. Through this acknowledgement, we move closer to creating a narrative that celebrates the true diversity and richness of our shared past. We hope you found the information both thought-provoking and interesting. If you're joining us for the first time, don't miss out. Subscribe now to stay updated on our exciting new content. Our mission is to uncover and share the truth about various important topics. If you enjoy our videos or find them informative, please consider giving us a thumbs up. Your support not only motivates us, but also helps spread our message to a wider audience, allowing us to enlighten even more people. We truly appreciate your support and can't wait to see you in our next video.